Welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. Today I'm playing with a brand new 2018 Fender Classic 50 Stratocaster, the lacquer finish model. Running into my board using my Strymon Deco for some crunch. Um, into my Mojo Tone Tweed Pro, mic'd up with a Shure SM57, and I add a little bit of Valhalla uh, Vintage Verb in post. That's what you're hearing. Now, let's learn this thing. The song is mostly going to be F, B flat, C. So that's a great exercise for arcaged pentatonic fills, aka Hendrix double stops. I'm going to start on the 8 of the A string and jump to 10 and 10 on the G and the B. And then a little hammer-on business with the 8 and 10 of that B. And then kind of shift positions to get that very classic move. So I jumped from, that is 10 on my D, 12, Clever hammer on there. 10 and 10, only the 12 on the D hammers on. Very hard thing to do. Watch out to not go. You gotta make it get my fingers lined up straight up and down. If you got big enough hands, you might be able to do it like that. That's the number one thing I, I see my students struggle with. If you're coming from blues position where your fingers kind of come in diagonal, it's really hard. So sometimes you gotta rotate around or rotate a little bit. Out of that, I'm getting on that uh, A string, 11, 10, 8, which is kind of like a flat third, like a gospel y kind of way to get out, because like thirds, they can always be a little tweaky. Fill it. That's not in the song, that's just a fill. That is 8 to 10. And then I'm kind of, hey, there's my F chord, 8 and 7. F chord inversion, 12, 10. Here's that little hammer again. <laughs> hammer again. And then, yeah, when you come back to it, stay on 12 and 10 of the A and D, and then bend that 12 to get the vocal melody there. That Just a little bend on 12. Yeah, I sneak pinky around to get 13, and then 10 of the A. That whole opening freeze. Fill it. Because, yeah, when we get to this C chord, so I happen to be on the fifth of the C, I know that I can walk into the third of it. Thinking of that chord shape 10, 11, 12, flat on those tens. Comes all around again. A little bit different. Stays on that, doesn't do the little, it just right to that. That's kind of our, this song is interesting because it's kind of a chorus and a chorus. I feel like both parts are anthemic and great. I don't know, I guess I'll call that the chorus. Some more filling, kind of a Motown fill. Eight, ten, eight, eight, walk up the scale. Ten, change strings. Seven. Now we're at a the B flat. One of my favorite little favorite <laughs> favorite little B flat major seven chords. Uh, eight, ten, ten. This is neat. Hammer on, pull off, slide back.
pretty cool. Very nice little thing there. Okay, so that's hammer on, pull off, slide it back to six, land on seven. It does again. So from that si uh, seven, I'm sliding back to ten. That's the melody. That's pentatonic. There's our F pentatonic. Nine, ten, seven, bendy, eight. And then this is kind of from the, the chorus. Kind of eight, slide into twelve, ten, and then there's a little bendy on the twelve. We've seen that before. We've seen that before. This time we're going to chromatically walk down from this C inversion to the B flat. Come back around. And then I'm going to go up. Because that's what her vocal melody does. So that's kind of out of F pentatonic there at the 13th pentatonic major at the 13th fret. 10, 13, bendy on the 12 mm -hmm. and back to this melody, back to this one, and that time, I don't know why I kind of moved those notes, because I, I don't know why really, but that's a C fill, there's, I'm going 6, 5, 8 there. And then I did the melody an octave lower just because. Here's another F. There's another F major pentatonic scale. There it is. Eight. Five, five, hammer on to seven. Daintily, not gonna work. Won't work as well to go like that. That little hammer on there. Drop it way down. So that's, yeah, there's our, hey, look at that, a B flat. What do you know? Let's see, uh, boom, where am I? Mm -hmm. five, uh, three, five on the big ones, A and E. Dainty hammer on. Three to five with the index finger flat. There's that kind of flat third to second fill off of now the F chord. Oh yeah, because it went. Does again. Slightly different fill. Well, the vocal melody is different. So that's off of that F shape on the G string. Three, two, three, oh. Ooh, look, I get an open string. really once you hit that open G you're really at a C chord the five chord of the song so then I'm like oh it's a C that means I can go five six seven flat with the index on the fives just using those cage shapes is all I'm doing and I like this yeah little C sus two that I do if that's a C there's the second degree of the scale hiding. Just makes a nice thing, yeah. And then harmonize the melody in sixes. Again, six notes apart, not a sixth chord. There's our F. Gonna slide into 10 and 10. Notice the gap between the D and the B string. Six and seven. Eight and eight. Little nine to eight. Nice. Hybrid picking. Let's see if you can rotate without glare. Then, tricky little finger buster because I'm trying to get that down here. And that's what you get. So I'm thinking out of this F shape. 
seven, five on the D, G and the D. Hammer on to that seven on the G. And then you kind of have to sneak index finger over to six of the D. Tricky bit, yeah. That's the fill from before. And then we're basically, yeah. I think I do a little, <laughs> a little octave, five, seven, muted out inside of it, three and five, F, and then what's it do? Yep, because it's going to hit a final B flat, a four to one, a plagal cadence, they call that. And I, yeah, land, end the song with an F inversion. Three, yeah, three hammers on to five, with that one still staying flat. And then just move it down. That actually gives us an F in first inversion. Pretty. I think the main takeaway from this pretty little arrangement is, is the thing I always like to stress for people is, yeah, it's cool to learn it, but see where those chord shapes are and how the melody wraps around those cage structures, because that's really why I do these things, well, other than I like the songs, but it's a way for me to challenge myself to find new ways to play those scales and those fills and connecting them to chord shapes. It's all about them chords. Have fun with that.